To protect Earth from a comet impact, new space mission will chase down comets at the edge, the edge of our solar system, and the UK scientists want to lead in that respect. It will be similar to an asteroid impact, protecting Earth from asteroid impacts. And we know that we have tremendous scars from such celestial bodies that have already impacted Earth. Not only Earth, the Moon, Mars, and other uh, planets of our solar system. Now, uh, they also bring other catastrophes with them, such as the impacts causing earthquakes, causing volcanic eruptions, which cause the volcanic winters, which cause other massive earthquakes and erup eruptions, and earth changes, climate changes, as we know. They've already, uh, many a times, have been described in the Old Testament of the Holy Bible. And from what we know, in the New Testament, these are prophecies of such events coming in the future. Even archaeology shows us the uh, ancient high priests of Egypt who informed the lawmaker of, of Athens 600 BC, Solon, who gave his testimony written to Plato, having to do with returning celestial bodies that pound the earth. It could be simultaneous, it could be a couple of years or weeks or days from each other, but they seem to be recurring when they come in, causing tremendous devastation. It seems that uh, this has also recently taken place, for example, in northern Africa, around the areas of uh, southwest Egypt, We've even had recently astrogeologists finding from Google Earth asteroid impact sites, impact craters, and uh, they were also very close to, or perhaps they gave rise to, volcanic eruptions and volcanic lava. Even now you find volcanic lava fresh in the desert, in the desert of Sahara, where we know they have tremendous dust clouds. Those dust clouds even come into Europe. And they even go across the Atlantic, reaching, for example, Central America, Mexico, and even the southern United States. So you can imagine how huge those dust clouds are, and yet the lava that has erupted seems to be cleaner than the floor of my house, let's put it that way. Uh, so what is that? Even if they erupted yesterday, nobody would know. There's nobody living out there. Uh, there's no air, aircraft passing by. It reminds me of what happened recently over one of the volcanoes that were erupting over the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. Nobody knew it was erupting except for a pilot that saw it off from the distance as he was flying a commercial aircraft uh, jet over uh, the area. And he saw it to, uh, to his north. So he was the one that reported, otherwise nobody would have known it was even uh, erupting. So these are some of the asteroid impact craters that we see. You can imagine what kind of a devastation they have caused. Even the Yucatan Peninsula, 66 million years ago, that they state had uh, caused a dinosaur extinction. Now this is uh, an Earth extinction. These huge bodies are Earth extinction events. Um, they bring up tsunamis of miles high. I mean, there's really no way that you can, uh, unless you have underground bunkers that you can seal off, that we recently found in Darren Kuyu and uh, Cappadocia in uh, Turkey. Graham Hancock explains a lot about that having to do with the devastation having uh, taken place about 12 and a half thousand years ago, and this goes along with the high priests of Egypt that uh, informed the ancient lawmaker of Athens, Solon, uh, and that high priest of Egypt says, yeah, these things happen every so often. So uh, the ancients knew how to have underground bunkers to save uh, up to a half a million people with aeration of clean air, with clean water, underground water. Um, and uh, dw underground dwellings that would uh, keep them safe under there for months on end to save lives. So this is another endeavor and it should have all of the world community behind these uh, endeavors uh, protecting Earth from such disasters because when they take place 
we better be ready. And since we have the capabilities and some type of a technology that perhaps could save us or save a, a, a large portion or even a small portion of, of humanity from such earth extinction events, then of course everybody should be behind this as fast as possible because we have a couple of strange bodies coming at us, one of them being Apophis in 10 years and another one being uh, the uh, small planet. They call it a small planet, it could be a comet, who knows what it is, Bennu. Uh, they're sending, the um, US NASA mission is sending uh, something, I think it'll be there in a couple of years, 2025 I think, to Bennu to find out what kind of material it's made out of because they want to pull it off its trajectory um, do something with it so it doesn't come close to Earth. And the same thing with the Apophis asteroid. Now at the end of April, beginning of May, they had a one-week uh, exercise drill. It's a two-year thing that they have worldwide where scientists, astronomers, and government officials get together. It's an asteroid uh, drill. In other words, uh, if they had an asteroid coming at us, what would they do to save Earth? It's a tabletop exercise, but they keep failing it. Every two years, they've up to now have failed it. So, um, anyway, the UK now wants to have a similar type of project having to do with comet intercepting in order to save Earth from comets. As we know, comets are much larger than asteroids or meteors. Uh, we, If you look at Google Earth, please take a look at it. I've mentioned this a couple times before. Look at that east to west groove in the mantle of the Earth, in the crust of the Earth, that goes horizontally just above uh, South America, north of South America. And again, at the south of South America, you have it cutting South America and uh, Australia, um, Antarctica. And it looks as if it has even cut that landmass. It looks as if South America was joined to Antarctica at one point, but was split by this comet sliding onto the mantle of the earth and stopping at a place where you have volcanic volcanic islands and sandwich islands the similar thing up to up to the north of south uh, latin america south america you, it slid it stopped uh, again horizontally coming in from the same direction and at the tip of that you have again volcanic islands which means that uh, it has caused a tremendous change uh, perhaps in the mantle of the earth as well causing those volcanic islands to come up and erupting. Uh, and there's another one again around uh, Papua New Guinea. That's a smaller one and all these seem to have been there's no land mass there which means that there must have been very tremendously icy bodies. Maybe they brought with them a tremendous amount of ice and water. Who knows? This is all a mystery but we do have the scars of such impacts on Earth and you can imagine the tsunamis these things that slammed into our planet have caused. Amazing. Um, now, the UK scientists, they say, lead new space mission to chase down a comet at the edge of our solar system. It's the Comet Interceptor mission. It will be launched in 2028. But the scientists have not decided which comet to target as yet. This is on the Mirror UK, today's comet, today's article. Um, now, the British scientists are leading this space mission to chase down a comet. The plan is to launch a spacecraft in 2028, and it, they want to send it off into space until it reaches a distance of 1.5 million miles from Earth. The spacecraft will then put, out, put on brakes, and it will lie in wait until astronomers on the ground spot a suitable comet for it to intercept. The astronomers have two possible targets in mind, both of which are untouched by the effects of our Sun. One is the pristine comet traveling through uh, the inward uh, part far from reaches of our solar system for the first time. The other is the one we saw recently and we found recently, the interstellar object similar, similar to Oumuamua the cigar-shaped asteroid which passed through the solar system last year. Their lack of contact, though, with the inner solar system makes these comets scientifically important as quote-unquote time capsules. Scientists believe they could offer insight into the conditions of the early solar system 
and therefore help them understand its formation. Yeah, everybody does these to understand how the solar system were, uh, was formed. Forget that uh, and just put up priority protection of Earth. <laughs> How's that? All right? You know they're there, just protect the Earth because they're coming in at us every, every so often. So, so now that we have advanced technology, let's be able to sort of uh, nudge them off their course and protect life on Earth. They say it will deploy two smaller daughter spacecraft, which then move in closer to measure features, such as the comet structure and surface material, as well as the cocktail of gases it gives off. Well, gases, we know it gives, and if the comets even go closer to the sun, they even evaporate, because they say they're made of uh, some kind of icy particles. Now, European Space Agency, the ESA, selected the project as the first in a new class of fast missions, quote-unquote, uh, they will use existing flight-proven technology to launch missions faster. Quote, Comet interceptors sound like something from a science fiction film, but UK scientists are working to make it a reality in collaboration with our partners in the European Space Agency. This is what Science Minister Chris Skidmore states, and he explains this new type a fast mission is a great example of how advances in space technology can bring benefits back to the science community. Yeah, not only that, but to save humanity, please. Thank you. And he says, our modern industrial strategy is ensuring that the UK takes opportunities to lead the new space age. Now, the, new, the Comet Interceptor is a United Kingdom-led proposal with UCL and Edinburgh University, and they're leading the international payload consortium that includes the Japanese JAXA and American NASA space agencies as well as other UK institutions. Now that the European Space Agency has selected the proposal, the scientists and the engineers will work together in order to develop the specific design and the mission program. The, uh, Chris, the head of the science programs at UK Space Agency, Chris Lee, says, I'm delighted that our academic community impressed ESA with a vision of what a small, fast science mission can offer. In 1986, the UK-led mission to Halley's Comet became the first to observe a cometary, cometary nucleus, the comet nucleus, that is. More recently, UK scientists took part in another iconic European Comet mission, we know that. That's the Rosetta. And he says, now our scientists will build on that impressive legacy by attempting to visit a pristine comet for the very first time and learn more about the origins of our solar system. Forget that. It's to protect Earth, please. Uh, the scheduled launch is in 2028, and that means the mission sharing a ride on a rocket with another UK-led mission, the Ariel mission. The Ariel stands short for Atmospheric Remote Sensing Infrared Exoplanet Large Survey Space Telescope. You know, all telescopes should be infrared because that's how they see things that are perhaps dark bodies, like uh, brown dwarf stars, uh, bodies that don't give off light but are there and are even coming to us. Uh, so they, that you can only see with infrared. So the Ariel aims to study the atmospheres of around 1,000 planets orbiting stars other than our own stars, known as the exoplanets. So great, I hope they get that done as quickly as possible and have a great success stopping incoming comets that come towards Earth. That is near-Earth asteroid missions, near-Earth comet missions, hazardous celestial bodies, of course. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.